Hello and welcome. What the story say? Y'all come in, sit down. I'm your host, Dr. Pauline Baird, telling our stories as usual. If this is your first time here, feel very welcome. I tell our family histories, our whispered stories, our long lost and sometimes forgotten traditions. And as we say in our village, a what the story say? Hmm. We've been talking money this month, and I want to continue with that today. Let's recap. I talked about your first time learning about money, what that experience was like. I shared my own experience with that. I asked you guys, what are some of the names in Guyana and around the world that we call money? I collected 20 names from Guyanese. Do, Fini, Freck, Small Piece, Mula, Paisa, Mouth Sour, Change, Hand Fair, Vex Money, Bab, Pocket Piece, Fine Thing, Grease My Hand, Lil Do, Sane, Granger and Malali, Towel and Donzai. All the names we have for money. And the places we put money in the ears, in your slip in your slippers, in the milk tin, in the glucose tin, in the my fair lady tin, in the mattress, under the mattress, in the hair, in the bra, in the shoes, in the handkerchief with a big pin. Mm -hmm. um, bury it, put it in the pocket, pin it on with a kerchief on your clothes. All those places are where we put money. And then we talked about the taboos about money. You know, not buying things at night. I talked about the taboos with money in Guam. My neighbor told me, you don't um, clean the house, sweep the house after dark because you're going to lose money. We have a similar thing like that. And then I went to Mama Rose of Zambia, my new family. And Mama Rose told us all about Susu. But you know, I have a big question. What is it called in all the rest of the Caribbean. It seems as though this business of traditional banking or microfinancing at the village level is called susu across the Caribbean. I know in Bahamas, they call it that, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, and other parts. But in Guyana, they call it box. Why? Box. Anybody knows? I don't know. So I'm gonna go down that rabbit hole. Do your research for me and tell me if you know the history of the name box. Today we have a new person all the way from Nigeria, our brother Chima, and he's gonna to talk to us about traditional banking in Nigeria. Our, in our discussion, we share our views and they're only ours. You might not share them. If you do share them, that's great. If you have other things to add, please do, because remember, these conversations I'm having is not for me to give you entire stories or whole stories. No, it's for us to make the story. So add your two piece, add your two bits. It's fine. You're welcome. In this program, you can do one thing for me. You can click follow. You can click like. You can click subscribe if you're on YouTube so that our audience can grow. And here's the thing, I have a new thing I'm doing. If you want to learn more about me on my life, um, you know, early childhood, growing up, other times in my life, you want to hear about travel and stories and teaching stories, you can subscribe to my new space called Substack. I'm writing stories there. The challenge for me is to write a story every day. I don't know if I could do it, I'll try. And what you can do, you can go there and subscribe. And if you want to donate to support me, you can do that too. All right. So thank you very much. I hope you have a very wonderful week. And I thank our brother for our story today. So without further ado, let's hear from him. And at the end of it all, click that button. For the record, can you tell us your name and where you're from okay. and what you do? Okay, my name is um, Chima Mbakwem. I am an Igbo man from the southeastern part of Nigeria. I am from Ebu, which is my roots. Um, I um, work here in Guam in the Department of Public Health and Social Services. I am a 
a TB and uh, Hansen disease control manager. I um, have lived here for eight years. I like it here, and um, I'm very happy to speak to you because um, it's interesting to see people who have the same perspective and uh, who want to know more. I'm a cultural rhetorician. That means I study how cultures do things, methodologies, and so on. And after I finished my degree, I thought I'd give reciprocity, the third arm of my research project, to give back to my community. I get stories, and then in academia, you lock them away, and people never see them, they never hear from you again. But I didn't want to do that, because I came from a very small village with Africans who were formerly enslaved, mm -hmm. bought the property. They bought the plantation and made a home for people like me. Okay. So I'm two, three generations later after that. So my grandmother's mother would have been close to slavery. Okay. Yeah. We just two grandmothers away from that. So, or enslavement, because people are very particular about that term. Because mm -hmm. Africans came to, to the Caribbean and not slaves. Mm -hmm. So I am trying to figure out what are the cultural retentions that we have from the motherland. Mm -hmm. And there's a thing that we have in our culture called box, a traditional banking. So I want to know from different African people, what do you have in terms of traditional banking? What was that like? How have you experienced it? How it, does it go? And things like that. What do you know about it? We call it box. Maybe you call it something else. Yes. I've heard that name. It's Susu, yeah. So Susu. It's Susu. So tell me everything you know about Susu. No, so uh, the, the the main question is, you know, if you're looking at it, are you looking at how it is practiced back home mm -hmm. or how it's practiced out here? Because both, both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you're looking at if you're looking at the African Africans in diaspora, mm -hmm. especially the Nigerians in diaspora, mm -hmm. you have to go back to um, pre slavery and then post-slavery right yeah in the mm -hmm. sense that um, we had the stories growing up about the white man coming to buy people from the mm -hmm. community so what was happening was you know from um, stories we had mm -hmm. you know they were only selling out the bad people oh. you know like when mm -hmm. they catch criminals you know they mm -hmm. send them out of the community but when when it became a lucrative business they started kidnapping to sell people mm -hmm. to the white man. Mm -hmm. And if you remember the, uh, the Igbo landing in Atlanta, yes, that was a story about you know the that, that's my that's my tribe. You know okay. the people that held hands and drowned, because um, culturally we see ourselves differently. We mm -hmm. are very independent and uh, very uh, innovative. Mm -hmm. So after that, then you also go back to what happened in the civil war in in, in my country. Mm -hmm. And when the civilian, when the British rule ended in 1960, we had um, the the how do you call, I think is a um, the system of government. I think is a by. I'm trying to get the system of government. But but what happened was that my tribe was very educated, like mm -hmm. the Yorubas. So yes. in 1966, 65, 66, you know, they started having issues, and then there was a military coup that that led into a civil war mm -hmm. and that civil war was when my tribe wanted to break away so after the civil war was when it started you know they gave us stipends you know because it was a no victor no vanquished war so with that stipend a few pounds mm -hmm. we had to start building mm -hmm. so what what happened was that we had businessmen mm -hmm. who had apprentices mm -hmm. so the apprentice were family members or people who bring their kids to them yeah. they they serve them and then after they serve them they give them loans to go start their own businesses mm -hmm. so this is how they started growing little businesses so you mm -hmm. see uh, a businessman have a group of young people train them on the trade and then give them loans and then they start building and then that's how they continuously build mm -hmm. so that was one and then two was um, with the women in the communities most times they they pull money together mm -hmm. a group of women or a group of families will come together mm -hmm. and pull money together at the end of every month mm -hmm. one family gets the money or one person gets their money mm -hmm. so it continuously goes wrong mm -hmm. and this is a way where 
they sustain each other. So mm -hmm. you contribute a bit, and then you get the pot. You contribute mm -hmm. a bit. So it's called uh, in some places it's called an um, isusu. Mm -hmm. So this is 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 more like a a um, a banking system right. that is designed by individuals for themselves. You know, mm -hmm. so it could be trade unions, it could mm -hmm. be community unions, it could be women's group, it could be a church group. Mm -hmm. But these are people who come together to support mm -hmm. themselves financially. Right. So that's how. So. For for my tribe, you know, yes. we we believe in unity. We believe right. in supporting each other. Mm -hmm. So this simple explanation is how we've been able to sustain our traditional banking system. Mm -hmm. So up to today, even if you still go back to to the, my country or mm -hmm. to Ibo land, the system still exists. Where the the big businessman takes a few young men mm -hmm. and train them over a period of time, mm -hmm. and then give them a loan to go start their own business. So what happens is that he is the big importer, he is the big supplier. So he has a chain of business mm -hmm. from this group of young people that he actually taught the tricks of the trade. Right. And who at some point were his boys, his apprentices, but now they're independent businessmen right. doing the same business with him. And mm -hmm. they continuously hand it down. So you so rather than the young man going to the bank to get a loan. Mm -hmm. the the young man works for this individual right. who actually gets the loan and is the shorty for the loan right. who at the end of his time with, 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 with that individual most times would not even give you money but will give you goods and supplies right. mm -hmm. to start off with so you cut off that loan mm -hmm. and then you can pay you can repay them as you increase your sales and then continues it mm -hmm. that's wonderful my question is now, when the loan goes wrong, what happens? Does it go wrong? It, it, people? It, it usually doesn't go wrong mm -hmm. in the sense that these are people who have a lot of um, uh, close-knit relationship. Mm -hmm. So they know who they're dealing with. So yes. before you come in, they, they already have their vetting system. Right. You know, And then sometimes the society has a way. Of taking care of it because with the local structure if it's the church you have mm -hmm. the priest who would you know come in mm -hmm. as an uh, as a someone who they can uh as an in, uh, in, how do you put it intermediary, intermediary or inter mm -hmm. someone who can actually Mediator. immediate mm -hmm. or yeah that's mm -hmm. the right word yeah so in, in, if it's a women's if it's the women's um association in the villages mm -hmm. you have the older more experienced women mm -hmm. who would guide the younger women right. so usually it doesn't go wrong mm -hmm. At, at the community level, but right. when you bring it up to the the modern times, where people don't live in those traditional structures, mm -hmm. then that's where you can have those challenges where somebody can, you know, out of um, greed or something, mm -hmm. you know. But but back in the days, it was consistent that they knew who was in the in mm -hmm. the in the association with them, you know, they knew who they could trust. You know, people are brought in based on people's assessment of their behavior. Mm -hmm. Good. Awesome. So you say that pre-enslavement time they had systems, and now in the contemporary times in the diaspora or in the abroad, as they say, mm -hmm. it continues. Yeah. It, so one it, of the benefits of that. So in the abroad, it continues, but it's not as pronounced as mm -hmm. it could be a group of four or five people coming together right. to do it. Mm -hmm. It is not as pronounced as is used to, but people 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 invest in other people through other things that are not like Isusu. Mm -hmm. You can look at um, a debt or mm -hmm. people giving birth. Mm -hmm. People come together and put in a pot for that individual, knowing that when it's my turn, you also put in a pot. Mm -hmm. So that way, the system the system has evolved in such a way that it, it can be used for one-off situations where right. people are people get support. So when an individual dies, if they belong to an association, mm -hmm. all the association members come in, either they levy themselves mm -hmm. or they open a pot where mm -hmm. people can put in money. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of at, at the end of the occasion, you you know you know how much you you get. Yes. Then when it's somebody else's turn, you still do exactly the same thing. So right. it's, it's more like a system of support right. that is monetary, mm -hmm. but at the same time is not um it's not as defined as the Isusu, right. where there is a system of putting in money and then getting a certain outcome at the end of the, the period. 
right? It's your social responsibility. Yes. And and equity. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's great. Um, Isusu. Every time I hear the word, I hear susu. It's, I think Jamaicans call it susu. Trinidadians call it susu. I talked to a lady from um, Zambia. She called it susu. And the first time I've heard isusu. So yeah. what is the me is there a particular meaning for isusu? But isusu means what? I, I can't. That's, I just, I just don't know. I just know it's isusu. isusu. Yeah. Ah, so yeah. that's a new one. Isusu. Yeah, yeah isusu. Yeah. yeah. Um, in my country, I learned that um, market women and who had their little entrepreneurial things going on, they used to pull money every day mm -hmm. to, pr to procure capital for the mm -hmm. next day or goods for the next day. And they would do this thing, you know, set in how many days a week. Um, but I heard that only women used to do it. Mostly women do this box or susu. Mm -hmm. But from what I'm gathering from you, it's not a gender thing. It's anybody. Uh, you, m mostly you can look at it from the gender mm -hmm. perspective because, you know, like if you look at uh, different cultures from our own side of the country, mm -hmm. the men actually have another system of bringing income back to the home. They're the ones who go out to hunt. They're the ones who have the, the jobs. Mm -hmm. The women are the ones who trade. The women are the ones who farm. Mm -hmm. Most times, you know, petty farming at home. Mm -hmm. So I think they, it, it, the, the men are so stretched in what they're doing okay. that they don't. They, the men are the providers, uh -huh. and then the women are the ones who keep the money, which is still the system we have almost everywhere. Where you have the stay-at-home mom. Okay. In in our culture, the stay-at-home mom actually runs the family because mm -hmm. the man just goes out to bring back home income mm -hmm. but the woman makes decisions about how the income is spread mm -hmm. you know? and then if you're looking at um uh, polygamous families too yes. it is the same system where mm -hmm. the man takes care of the three or four wives mm -hmm. depending on the culture or the tradition mm -hmm. but those women come together as a unit to make sure that the family you know is united and the family moves moves along so mm -hmm. the women the, the it, it is more tilted to the feminine gender mm -hmm. than the masculine gender. Yeah. I see. What kind of man are you? I am an Igbo man. <laughs> and the Igbo man is one of the best businessmen you can ever think of. If you go anywhere in mm -hmm. the world today, and this is a saying, anywhere in the world you go, you don't see an Igbo man, you turn around and leave because there's no business there. Yeah. I've heard that the Igbo men are good providers and they're very prideful of that. Yes, we work. I've heard it. <laughs> we work really, really yes. hard to provide and for our family. And they walk the walk and they talk the talk. Yes. You know, what you just said to me calls into question this notion, not even notion, as a belief out there that African people cannot save, they're not entrepreneurs, they're they're um, they're not economically savvy, mm -hmm. that they can't have businesses, mm -hmm. but and they can't do anything, which I know it's a lie because two years after plantation, my ancestors in 1840, 1841 could buy a whole plantation mm -hmm. and turn them into villages mm -hmm. um, so that we can come. So I know it's a lie. Mm -hmm. Um, but somewhere along the line, there might have been a breakdown. Probably there, there is a breakdown because there are gaps in the story. But from what you're saying, um, I would like our people to know that it's not true. It's not true. And people look down on those same microsystems. And now I hear, you know, there's this guy from India that was doing this um, micro banking. Mm -hmm. And, but he, I think he got a, maybe Nobel Prize or some kind of big prize for that micro banking thing. Whereas that thing was in our system, African systems, for years and years and years and years. From what you're telling me, they're taking small money and goods, lending and spreading. Yeah, it's, yes. it's, it's so, a... Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't cut you short. It's called... Uh, what's the term again for exchange of goods? Bartering? It's not bartering. Uh, 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 oh man. Commerce? You know, I uh, so I think that's a big lie. We have to look closer at... But I have an answer mm. to what you're saying. Yes. And you know, the thing is, so when when you describe African-American, when you describe mm. black people, mm -hmm. 
It depends on where you're coming from. Right. First of all, I came to the U.S. with a graduate degree. Mm -hmm. That's how I came here. Mm -hmm. So I had already gone through primary, second, elementary, secondary college, mm -hmm. and I came here. Mm -hmm. I speak good English. I write mm -hmm. good English. Mm -hmm. I came here to compete. Mm -hmm. I didn't come here to to mess around mm -hmm. because where I come from had a system, mm -hmm. but the system collapsed yes. due to bad leadership. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make our education inferior mm -hmm. to whatever other education. Mm -hmm. And I always say this to people: my my, I have I have. Cousins, mm -hmm. I come from a huge medical family. Mm -hmm. I have cousins that are doctors that were trained in Russia, doctors that were trained in Germany. My dad was trained in Canada. Mm -hmm. So during the Cold War, these countries took young Africans mm -hmm. to their countries to educate them and also indoctrinate them. But what happened was that all these people came back to the country with this knowledge mm -hmm. to build. Mm -hmm. But when these countries, when this, when we started having challenges back home, mm -hmm. the second generation of these families started moving back because their father mm -hmm. married people from women from those countries. Right. So a lot of these kids have dual citizenship. Right. So they moved back to these countries. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at these immigrants, mm -hmm. and if you're looking at the, the African Americans who were born and who grew up in America, mm -hmm. there's a huge disconnect that a lot right. of people don't see mm -hmm. because these ones are coming from economies that that were that were plundered mm -hmm. and then they are coming here as uh, uh, economic migrants. Mm -hmm. They are coming to work and make money, mm -hmm. so they get into the system, and then when they start having kids, mm -hmm. they put the kids in the system to succeed. So if you look at the U.S. and, and London, mm -hmm. most especially, you find out that the second to the third generation mm -hmm. Africans who emigrated in the in the early and eight eighties, mm -hmm. all their kids are lawyers, engineers, doctors. They are succeeding. Mm -hmm. So this gener this generation of migrants are mm -hmm. different from the generation of migrants mm -hmm. in the early seventies and in the early sixties. Mm -hmm. So when when you are making those comparisons. You, 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 the, the, the way the system is designed now is that you're seeing one person taking the glory for teamwork. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing in a company where you only recognize the GM right. for being a successful GM, mm -hmm. but everybody forgets that he has a strategic team, he has a group right. of people working for him. So if you look at those people who are doing those jobs, you find out that these are the young Africans mm -hmm. who are sons of the late migrants. Right. If you look at the, if you go back and do a research on doctors, nurses in the U.S., master's degree holders, PhD holders, you find out that the migrants from mm -hmm. Africa have mm -hmm. a higher percentage than everybody in the U.S. Yes. and in other countries, right? Nigeria. Nigeria, most especially. Most of, yeah, they have that that data says Nigerians are the most progressive. Yes, yeah. and this is because of how we're driven. Yes, when like I can use myself as an example. Mm -hmm. When I moved, the first thing I looked for was a Montessori school mm -hmm. because that is where I know my kids will get the kind of education I want. Yes, when I took my kids to the school, what did I see? Only Indians, mm -hmm. Chinese, and my son was just the only African kid in the mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. What happened? The system of education actually prepares those kids to succeed in life. Mm -hmm. So now I am working and investing in that child mm -hmm. for his future. Right. And the system for us is you mm -hmm. invest in your child to take care of you. Mm -hmm. So my mom, mm -hmm. my dad died when I was six. My first brother was 12. Mm -hmm. My last sister was three years old. Mm -hmm. My mother single-handedly mm -hmm. brought all of us up. Mm -hmm. Now, she lives in Florida mm -hmm. in her own house. She doesn't do anything. She's taken care of by all of us. Mm -hmm. That is her retirement plan. See? Yes. And people make that as if it's a bad thing. No. An aspersion. Uh, because I, when I, I remember being in a master's program mm -hmm. and we had this discussion about this woman mm -hmm. who was going to nursing home. And I started thinking, well, why is this person talking about putting their mother in a nursing home? Yeah. Know any better? So in a discussion, I said, in my 
country that's a my village is a curse of shame. You put your mother in 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 old people house, you're crazy. People will curse you from here till whatever. Your job is to take care of your parents. Yes. Take care of them. And so I could not understand this Western ideology about putting them there because um you were supposed to take care of your, your children. But when it's spoken about on the media and in certain educational circles, it's as if your parents make you as their pension plan yeah. and they're not supposed to make you as a pension plan oh my God. <laughs> so that's how they see it you know yeah so I, I, I think um, for a lot of us who moved to the West yeah. I came here when I was 35 yeah I see through a lot of things you mm -hmm. know and sometimes you give credit to people because they don't know yes. it is the only thing they know and you can only fight from the side that you see yeah. is a six for me is a nine for you and there's no way because if we turn around it becomes the same thing yeah. so the most important thing for for people the scholars who and for me i always say that um, um research is always skewed in the sense that you always have an outcome already planned so when you're designing your questionnaires you know you you actually work it right mm. it is different when you are open mm. and you're receptive depending on how you design your mm. your questionnaires right mm. because having worked like i said my um, background is mm. sociology and anthropology so yes. i take my time mm -hmm. to study the effect of people in mm -hmm. the society mm -hmm. and and vice versa yes. that's why i ended up in public health because yes. what i'm doing actually is health sciences. I'm yes. looking at how people behave, how uh, behaviors affect their health, right? Mm -hmm. So, I actually presented a paper on um, um, culture and, uh, and TB. Mm -hmm. And at the national level, they were looking at me like, whoa, we never thought about it like that. Because I'm saying, mm -hmm. the way you interpret your symptoms yes. actually affects how you get help yes mm -hmm. if you if i don't have knowledge of a disease mm -hmm. but i have the symptoms mm -hmm. the first thing i do is treat the symptoms from my cultural perspective precisely yeah mm -hmm. i take hot soup because mm -hmm. my throat mm -hmm. is dry mm -hmm. i'm coughing out phlegm mm -hmm. i take more because i'm coughing out mm -hmm. but if i have knowledge of the fact that if i'm coughing for more than two days mm -hmm. i need to go see a doctor mm -hmm. that is different so that mm -hmm. component is missing yes then you're also looking at do i have access do i know where to go mm -hmm. that's another challenge so yes. if you're looking at these barriers then you're looking at it from the fact that this is the driver mm -hmm. for this disease in this community or this mm -hmm. environment because of these cultural issues that affect right. them. Mm -hmm. So you put it back to what you're saying, you know. Mm -hmm. So being able to take a step back and look mm -hmm. at it, you know, holistically right. and say mm -hmm. what why is this happening? You know, what what makes this happen? Mm -hmm. A lot of people a lot of people don't ask those hard questions. Mm -hmm. Under what conditions these things occur. Yes, this and this and this, but under what conditions yes. and you have multiple perspectives. And be willing to acknowledge that there are multiple perspectives and not bring one, one perspective. Are we on the same page on that? The dominant story. We are. And yeah. I have <laughs> fought against it. I am open about, you know, my opinion about why people should not just make conclusions about anything. Yeah. Life is fluid. Mm -hmm. Things change. People learn new behaviors. Mm -hmm. People can change old behaviors. Mm -hmm. The environment has a lot of impact mm -hmm. on people. Like... Like I told you, the credit card system, I lose sleep <laughs> knowing that I can spend money that I don't own. <laughs> I, I can't imagine it. Um, I have something to tell you about that. Yeah. When I first came to America, I was telling my sister something about buying everything. And she said, girl, you don't buy everything cash here. You have to have data. I was like, what? <laughs> so I was telling my, the people on my program, my, one of my first um, understanding about money was debt. Because mm -hmm. my mother kept saying she had debt. Mm -hmm. But I see her put the money under the ledge, under the house. Mm -hmm. I said, but you have money. She said, no, I have debt. And I'm thinking D-E-A-T-H. It was much later I understood it was a money thing. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I'm never going to have debt. Mm -hmm. As little as I was, I probably was seven or eight. Mm -hmm. And I don't have debt mm -hmm. to this day. Mm -hmm. So, and my sister said, but you have to have debt in America. That's, mm -hmm. all, that's the only way they will know you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, really? Yeah. So what kind of backward system is this? 
And so when I came to buy to get a house now, you know, they tell me they don't know me because they don't have any credit history on me and everything like that. And I must take my money from the bank, bring it to this bank here, and they will keep it there then for three years. And then they're going to say, well, I am who I say I am. And then they're going to lend me this money to build my house at how much percent interest. So this young girl is sitting there telling me this stuff. I listen to her. I said, girl... I understand that you get a job to do, but let me tell you where I come from. People just get a land and they get a two by four here and they live inside. Next month, they throw a box, they build another piece. The other month, they build another piece. I said, you telling me that I must bring my hundred something thousand dollars, put it in your bank, for you to rent me my money to get a house that I don't own and then you tell me I own this house and I'm paying 30 years. How oh, I own a thing that I'm paying for 30 years? Does this make any sense to you? I said, girl, this doesn't make no sense. I said, you're young, but pick sense with a nonsense. It's a foolishness. <laughs> it's the way I come from. Oh, and, and people buy old plantation. <laughs> we put your money together. Oh, my God. I said, you want to tell me I must rent for three years. 550 dollars for three years i said girl eh, eh. Mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. so <laughs> i went to another bank yeah. and that bank i started asking different questions yeah. how do people get house mm -hmm. and so they say well you can get houses that are on the market you can get one fixer up or blah 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 blah, blah. and then they said you can do owner finance i said oh how mm -hmm. that goes mm -hmm. you put down this 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 and so and then i said who builds they said I said, ask them, do people build? He said, yes. Who build for you guys? They told me about builders. He said, give me a list. They gave us a list of 30 builders. I went to every builder and asked them. So they don't want to deal with me. Yeah. They, they do commercial buildings. And so one guy said, I'll build for you. Wow. I paid that guy every month, three months he built to my house. Wow. I never had a debt. Every month I negotiated. I am not doing that. So... Wow. Because of that, I was able to go to grad school and all these different things and not worry about rent. And then for school, I won, uh, you know, the, 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 the free ride, as they say, yeah. you know, um, scholarships sure. throughout. So I didn't need to, to have money. They give you money as a grad student mm -hmm. to live on. I made sure I lived on that. I live near school. I walk. I get on the bus. I go. Oh, I owe no one mm -hmm. because I don't like that because I didn't come from a culture that did that i saw my grandmother and them farm their land sell their produce they didn't have a lot of means mm -hmm. that doesn't mean i have to do that but i quickly recognize that something is wrong with this system it is. or it might be good for other people but not good for me mm -hmm. so and, and i like your point about your your childhood on the plantation because so for me i am i'm also thinking back on that system right because a lot of successful families in the olden days mm -hmm. lived from the land yes but now everybody is trying to take you away from the land tell me about it my niece told me she she was in school in another country and she said the teacher said if you don't straighten up your act you're going to find you you're going to be you'll find yourself working in the field some way and she was crying to me i said hey 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 i want to talk to your teacher and tell your teacher, yeah. we don't have a problem with the land. Yeah, we have. Yeah. The man that farms the land is the man with the money. Yes. I said, tell that, that lady yeah. that we, African people, have a relationship with the land. land yes. And somebody is trying to tell you that something's wrong with the land and you work in the land. So what if you have to go work and make a farm? Make your own farm. That's it. So you I'm know? thinking of, um, yeah, because for, for my culture, the earth, the land mm -hmm. is a woman. Mm -hmm. That bears fruit, mother. Mm -hmm. So that's why we respect our women mm -hmm. because we see them as a land and mm -hmm. we worship the land, mm -hmm. right? And for me, whatever comes out from the land is good because it bears fruits for mm -hmm. all of us. So here, I buy produce from farmers, mm -hmm. like this. Yeah, that's the farmers market over there. Yes. This this is the real one, yeah. and the reason is. You don't have chemicals, you don't get sick, mm -hmm. you know, you... Mm -hmm. I don't. I never knew chickens could grow in one day, I never knew bananas <laughs> could grow. It is so alien to me, you know? And mm -hmm. I... 
I eat wild pig. Mm -hmm. They tell me it's a feral pig. It's mm -hmm. going to make you sick. I said no, because I don't cook it half and eat it with blood. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. I cook it at 100 degrees mm -hmm. and put my spices yeah. so I can get the best yes. mm -hmm. because it's lean meat and yeah. you grew up eating fresh veggies right yes <laughs> but you are eating the pig that has antibiotics but you know what yeah. in my neighborhood mm -hmm. i i always look for the chickens and the, the yeah. this rooster yeah. and i said look here come yard boss he's yeah. strutting and he's throwing and everything yeah. And these chickens are growing wild everywhere. Mm -hmm. Back home, that would have been a good curry. It's good curry, yeah. I mean, yeah. chickens are here wild, and everybody goes and gets the chicken in the supermarket. Oh. And I'm thinking, what is wrong with us? We don't see the land in a certain way, you know? But I'm really, really glad for this experience that, yeah. and for what you've shared today. Right, um, you. So again, okay. for the record, can you tell us your name okay. and where you're from okay. and what you do? Okay, my name is um, Chima Mbakwim. I am an Igbo man from the southeastern part of Nigeria. I am from Ebu, which is my roots. Um, I um, work here in Guam in the Department of Public Health and Social Services. I am uh, a TB and uh, Hansen Disease Control Manager. I am. Um, I've lived here for eight years. I like it here, and um, I'm very happy to speak to you because um, it's interesting to see people who have the same perspective and uh, who want to know more. And um, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. This, it's been a privilege. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. you. She told me you stay in Japan. Yes, I work. And oh, I got books on Amazon. You can buy some of those if you like and there's our brother crazy ojingo you know you know writer extraordinaire his books are on there too i is a bv man tomorrow with the rising sun and so many more and then we have little Liel wills with her book the diary of a 12 year old girl from brooklyn she wrote that book when she was 11 years old so you can go check that out as well and you know if you're ever in antigua check out dara 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 Handmade in Redcliffe Key. She's got you covered in linens and things. So, yawa good. <laughs>